Hey everyone, Dr. Mungli here. Today I am going to explain you how cholesterol is converted to bile acids. Now one of the fate of cholesterol in the liver is to make bile acids. I have a video on fates of cholesterol in the liver. Link for that is there in the description below and also it is appearing at the end of this video. Now how the cholesterol is converted to bile acids? This will be done by an enzyme called 7-alpha hydroxylase. This enzyme is referred as rate limiting enzyme and regulated enzyme for bile acid synthesis. Now lot of bile acids, if there are more, the increased concentration of bile acids in the liver will have a negative effect on 7-alpha hydroxylase enzyme. And also 7-alpha hydroxylase enzyme, it needs vitamin C. Deficiency of vitamin C can also lead to decreased activity of 7-alpha hydroxylase. Now what this enzyme does? 7-alpha hydroxylase enzyme, as it is shown in the figure here, it is going to convert cholesterol into 7-alpha hydroxy cholesterol. It basically introduces hydroxyl group onto the 7th carbon atom of cholesterol molecule. Now what will happen to 7-hydroxy cholesterol molecule? 7-hydroxy cholesterol molecule as it is shown again in the figure here, it is converted into cholyl coa and kinodeoxy cholyl coa. This job it will be done by an enzyme called 12-alpha hydroxylase. Now this 12-alpha hydroxylase, it is going to remove a 3-carbon propionyl-CoA from the hydrocarbon chain attached to cholesterol molecule at 17th carbon atom. Now, what happens to the cholyl-CoA and kinodeoxy-cholyl-CoA? Now the cholyl-CoA, if you remove CoA from cholyl-CoA, you get cholic acid. Now this cholic acid and also kinodeoxy-cholic acid, so cholic acid and kinodeoxy cholic acid, these two molecules, they can be released by the hepatocytes into the duodenum, into the bile and from there into the duodenum. But usually doesn't, that doesn't happen in the hepatocytes. The reason for that is cholic acid and kinodeoxy cholic acid, if they are released into the duodenum as the bile acids, now the duodenum has got a pH of 6. Duodenal pH is 6, second part of the duodenum, pH is around 6 because of the bicarbonate. Now the pK of these two molecules is also 6. pK of cholic acid and kinodeoxy cholic acid is also 6. Now you are dealing with pH equals to pKa. That means during this condition where pH equals to pKa, there will be 50% protonation and 50% deprotonation of these molecules. It means 50% of your cholic acid will be there in the form of cholate and 50% of the cholic acid, it will be there as cholic acid itself. Now note that bile acids, the, the purpose of bile acids in the duodenum is to participate in emulsification process. I have a video on lipid digestion and absorption. The link for that video is there in the description below and also it is appearing at the end of this video. Now, cholic acid purpose is to participate in emulsification and that will participate in emulsification only if it is there in cholate form, deprotonated form. Because deprotonated form of this molecule has got a charge, negative charge. And that negative charge, it gives that polarity for a bile acid so that it has got polar part and non-polar part in the micelle formation. Now, if pH equals to pKa, if your liver is synthesizing and secreting cholic acid and deoxycholic acid as such into the biliary canaliculi and then into the bile and then into the duodenum, so it means only 50% of these molecules are effective, rest 50% they simply do not participate in emulsification process. In order to avoid that, in order to make these molecules more efficiently participating in emulsification process, so your liver is going to conjugate cholic acid and deoxycholic acid. Now the conjugation will be using a taurine molecule, taurine, taurine is a derivative of cysteine as it is shown in the figure now. 
you have a taurine taurine is a derivative of cysteine amino acid cysteine which is a sulfur containing amino acid is converted to taurine and the taurine is added to folic acid and there you get taurocholic acid that is a primary bile acid in the same way glycine simplest amino acid glycine can also be added on to cholic acid there you get glycocholic acid now you have taurocholic acid and glycocholic acid in the same way you can add taurine and glycine to keno deoxycholic acid so when the taurine is added to keno deoxycholic acid you have taro keno deoxycholic acid when the glycine is added to keno deoxycholic acid you get a glyco keno deoxycholic acid now we have four primary bile acids that is taro cholic acid glyco cholic acid taro keno deoxycholic acid glyco keno deoxycholic acid now what is the purpose of adding this glycine and taurine what is the purpose of conjugation so when the glycine and taurine is added so taro cholic acid now i am writing taro here taro cholic acid pka is 2 pk of taro cholic acid is 2 and uh, pk of glyco cholic acid glyco cholic acid pk it is 4 now let's see that when this taro cholic acid glyco cholic acid taro keno deoxycholic acid which is pk is 2 glyco keno deoxycholic acid pk 4 when these primary bile acids are getting into the duodenum where the duodenal ph is 6 and your molecule taro keno deoxycholic acid pk is 2 that means you are dealing with ph more than pk a when there is ph is more than pk so the molecules predominantly they will undergo deprotonation so when the molecules undergo deprotonation overall charge on that molecule is polar now negative charge if they interact with sodium and potassium they will have positive charge overall there is a polarity here that means by decreasing the pka from 6 to 2 by adding taurocholine or decreasing the pka from 6 to 4 by adding glycine so making taurocholic acid glycocholic acid taurocheno deoxy glycocheno deoxycholic acid overall you are keeping uh, bile acids in the intestine in deprotonated form and they are effectively participating in emulsification this is what happens in during conjugation that is the purpose of conjugation for that matter now let's see what happens to these primary bile acids once they participate in emulsification process digestion of the lipids and absorption of the lipids so what will happen to bile acids now the bile acids they will move from duodenum jejunum and all the way into terminal part of ileum in the terminal part of ileum so what happens so as they move from uh, as the primary bile acids are moving from jejunum into terminal part of ileum the bacteria present in the intestine they are going to act on these primary bile acids as it is shown in the figure so the bacteria they are going to deconjugate glycine and taurine from primary bile acids so it means taurine and glycines are removed from it and also they are going to bacteria is going to uh, cause a seven alpha dehydroxylation process so the bacterial mediated deconjugation seven alpha dehydroxylation process will convert your primary bile acids into secondary bile acids now the taurocholic acid and glycocholic acid will be converted into deoxycholic acid as it is shown in the figure and other side keno deoxy taro keno deoxycholic acid glyco keno deoxycholic acid they will be converted into lithocholic acid now deoxycholic acid and lithocholic acid these two are secondary bile acids now the primary bile acids which are not converted into secondary bile acids and the secondary bile acids which are there so they will be absorbed predominantly at the terminal part of ileum so 95% of these bile acids they will be reabsorbed into back into the hepatocyte by enterohepatic circulation and they will come back into duodenum again that process we call it as enterohepatic circulation 95% of our bile acids are recycled like this only 5% of the bile acids are excreted out of our body into the feces and in that 5% most of it it will be lithocholic acid or lithocholic acid okay so this is all about uh, formation of bile acids and why there is a conjugation process 
what is the importance, uh, what is the relation between pH and pKa and how it helps in efficient emulsification process in the duodenum. I hope this video has helped you in understanding uh, bile acid synthesis and uh, use uh, the relation of why the different types of bile acids that we have. So if you have any questions, so kindly put that into comment section below. I'll try to answer them as quickly as possible and also make sure to subscribe to the channel so that when I upload a new video, so you will get a notification. Thanks again and see you in my next video.